So I did an assessment yesterday. It was with a guy. He adopted a dog a year and a half ago that did a board and train somewhere, right? He got maybe 20 minutes of training by the foster or something like that. Like, hey, okay. here's how you use the training. But but, but he, he didn't really know any of it, right? The dog's having some issues, a little bit of resource guarding here, a little bit of snarkiness here, stuff like that. And the guy came in and he was like, man, like, I, I really think we need to do a board and train with this dog. So I was like, all right, well, let's, let's do an assessment, right? Anytime a dog has had a lot of prior training before, before I have somebody sign up for a program, I want to see where the dog is at with stuff. I want to see what the degree of training that they have uh, is so we see how much the dog needs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I start working with the dog and I'm like, this fucking dog knows shit. Like, <laughs> Like, this dog was really? doing downstays, doing place command, doing recalls, walking nice on a leash. Like, once I started communicating clearly to him, mm-hmm. the dog knew how to do all this. So, the skills that needed to be established were already there. Yeah. So, you get back to what is board and train and what is board and train not. Board and train does not eradicate the problems. No. Board and train creates the communication to eradicate the problems once the dog goes home. Mm. Right? Yeah. So... So a board and train would have been the last thing that this dog needed. Now, could a board and train have provided some sort of benefit? Sure, right? I mean, realistically, the dog could have come to us. We could have brushed up on the training a little bit, obviously, but that wouldn't have taken a full four weeks, obviously. We could have brushed up on the training a little bit, given the dog a couple of weeks of success with working through these problematic behaviors, you know, set some, another thing that board and trains do, could have set some routines for some of the, uh, some of the problematic behaviors. So things like feeding, for example, right? We could have implemented, hey, this is going to be the feeding routine, right? Another mm-hmm. skill that the dog is going to need to know once the dog goes back home so the owner can do it, right? Or I told him, I was like, I was like, I was like, you could do that and, and it would be fine, right? And we would work with the dog and we would set some of these routines and stuff, but we're still gonna need to spend the same amount of time coaching you at the end. Right. Yeah. It's not gonna eliminate that problem. And that's really where the issue is, is mm-hmm. with the owner coaching side of things. I was like, or you could do like five sessions with us since the dog already knows the training. We don't need to train the dog at this point. I could just train you how to use the skills that the dog already has. Yeah to combat your issues, right? Mm -hmm. And from a financial standpoint, you're talking about the difference of like $3,000, right? This guy wanted to do a board and train. This is saving this guy like $3,000 of unnecessary stuff that the dog doesn't need. Mm -hmm. And then from a time standpoint, we could immediately jump into the problem, which is coaching the owner. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, so obviously we decided to go the one-on-one lesson route and we're going to start jumping into things that way, right? Because that is where the root of the issue is, is making mm-hmm. sure people are doing things properly, right? Yeah. 